and that I've had this discussion with many people and some people believe that you know low code is one thing and no code is another and they're completely different and they're you know and then other people think that they can kind of mesh together so the way you talk about your tool it makes it seem as if you know part of it is no code but then also like there is low code so do you think they're completely separate or would you consider your tool both um, yeah, we consider our tool to be actually all three categories, which I would consider full code, low code, and no code. And uh, I think that whether or not people admit it, um, tools are these three things. And the way to look at this is this. Uh, um, whenever you're doing no code and you're dragging some sort of block or you're doing something, somebody wrote the logic that runs that block. And then they gave you some sort of parameters or some sort of handles that you as a no-coder can tweak. But there is logic. That computer is running code somewhere. And so these no-code tools, um, they double down, triple down on this whole no-code philosophy. But what they're really doing is they're saying that they're the only ones that can make bricks for their system. And you're forced to try to build things with the bricks that they provide. That's a no-code platform. Then a low-code platform typically goes one level above that and in a low code platform they typically give you a larger library of bricks and then they maybe give you some extra scriptability on top of that and i would say that's something like uh mit scratch blockly uh, my kids play with various lego platforms that allow you to use sort of these blocks to, to, to sort of program with with these mm -hmm. and again you're in an area of you can't really craft your own blocks they're just giving you more logic in these things, but you're really confined by the total number of blocks that you're given. And then the, the last layer is full code. And today, nobody really talks about that in the low code slash no code space. Full code would be, you can write any code that you want. That would be something like opening up Visual Studio Code or a really cool thing that I love playing with is Code Sandbox, which I think is a great platform. You can uh, bust open a quick sandbox and you can type in, you can write any code that you want and you can import anything that exists on Node Package Manager, which has, I think, over a million packages on it. And you can you have access to the whole world of code, right? So what, we're, what we did at Clutch is we said, we want you to have access to the whole world of code. No limits. E everything is possible. And then we expect people to sort of, or, or we think people will craft bricks for others to use. So we're using full code and low code to enable a no code experience. So we're giving you Legos, but anybody can craft their own pieces to share with the community. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. <clears throat> the, the majority of my listeners probably, you know, they, they don't care as much. I feel like the majority of my listeners are just like, completely no code, maybe some low code. What do you think, like, do you think, I mean, you're a, you're a developer, right? So this is yes. a good question to ask you. What, like, I feel like there's this stigma with developers and like being super cynical whenever it comes to no code tools and platforms and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and I think for good reason, because again, um, it, it's, it's like, think about Legos. I think they're a great, not just because their name's Clutch, but if you think about these. And there's, <laughs> diff there's, there's different kinds of Legos. And I have, my youngest boy um, is nine months old, and he plays with Duplos. Those are the really big Legos. There's probably only like 10 to 15 different types of Duplos. And they're the biggest type. And then you've got, like, then you get into Lego Classic, which are going to be your your normal size Lego pieces. And then you can get into like Technic and Mindstorms. And that's where the pieces start getting smaller and more specialized and the age limit goes up and they get more complex. All right. So I would say that low code is like Duplo or no code is like Duplo. You get these 10 bricks. Yes, you can build a car out of four pieces, but it's not going to look as good. It's not going to function um, as well as the Lego traditional, which is going to be like low code. But that's not going to be as good as Lego Mindstorms. By the time you get to Mindstorms, you can put a computer in it and you can actually make the car go and you can make it do things. Mm -hmm. And so that's the whole spectrum. 
So developers get mad because if they get handed Duplo, they become immediately blocked. They're used to being able to do whatever they want. So what we think is, is that you shouldn't be given an either or. Um, you should be given the whole spectrum. Now, if you come in as one of your listeners and you don't know code very well or you don't want to learn code, that's fine. Then um, you log in to call it, you go to our marketplace. And our marketplace today has already a lot of components in it. But as we open it up to where everybody can publish, you'll have thousands of components to choose from. So we're just going to make it to where you're still going to be using bricks, but there are just like infinite amounts. And let's say that you're a low coder and um, you're just missing one brick. I just had this one brick. Well, I don't want you to have to wait for a bubble or I don't want you to have to wait for, you know, whoever to have to build this brick for you. We make it to where anybody can craft the brick. So you could just post to the community, maybe pay somebody $50 to make you the brick. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But they'll go craft it in a full code environment. I and mean, then they'll publish it to the marketplace. Then you can install it in your app and then you can use it. So our community will consist of full code low code and no coders working together to sort of build the community of available pieces. That's super powerful. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so whenever you say um, connecting, you can connect your applications, whatever, to any backend, are you referring to like the tradition in the traditional sense, like AWS, Azure, Firebase, or can you also connect it to Airtable or, you know, some people use Google Sheets for different sites? What are the limitations with that? So the short answer is yes. That's what I mean by that. Um, okay. the, longer answer, the longer answer is, remember, uh, because we're running a full JavaScript runtime, no different than if you, if you ever watch a programmer boot up their you know, terminal and they're building apps and stuff like that. They're not limited. If they want to build something and connect it to Shopify, build and connect it to Firebase, uh, build something and connect it to um, whatever else, they can. How are they able to do that? Well, developers have access to everything on Node Package Manager or whatever package management system they use. And all of these companies that have all of these backends produce libraries to connect to their backend systems. And so remember, you can go full code with us. You can actually import Shopify's data connector directly from Node Package Manager, write a thin wrapper around it to turn it into a Lego brick, and then you can share it back with the community. And then at that point, we've taken it from being a full code solution to being accessible as a low code solution to everybody in the community. So we expect that the, on our marketplace, you will have Shopify, you'll have Firebase, you'll have WordPress, you'll have Drupal, you'll have XYZ. People will log into our marketplace and go build their front end and then go, ooh, which, which back end do I want to connect it to? They'll go search it up, they'll click install. Then what you end up with is a Lego brick that you're going to drag into your composition or component. That's what they're actually, what they actually are web components. Mm-hmm. They'll drag that into their composition and then it'll say like paste in your API key. So they'll paste that in. And then all of a sudden data will start flowing out of that component. And then any child component of that data connector will now be bindable um, onto the data connector. So you built a um, blog list, you drag in a WordPress data connector paste in your WordPress URL and API uh, key. And uh, at first, your design has static uh, copy in it as a placeholder. Then you would actually just bind it up by clicking things. Gotcha. So, so essentially, um, you're, so you say websites. So, so in terms of limitation with your platform, there is none technically. So if I wanted to come on and I could build I could build a landing page, or if I wanted to come on and build like a full blown system, I could do so. Yes, that's correct. Um, that's awesome. One other one other thing that's very interesting about the platform is we actually can ingest code inwards from the npm. So you can actually, if you wanted to build something with Material UI, Material UI is already available via npm to developers. Well, it's available to you now as a, as a low coder, no coder. You can just import Material UI in, and now you have access to 50 plus um, really good looking UI components or Ant Design or um, Bootstrap, whatever. Mm-hmm. Then they come into your component library, and then you can drag and drop and use those. Um, if you need some logic, some data connectors, you can do that. And then what you produce out of the tool either is a product, so 
a full blog or website and app soon will support React Native and you can build native apps as well. But you might actually just want to produce Legos. So you might want to just be producing another component library. So you could actually build a design system or a set of components that you want to reuse in multiple products. You can actually post that back to the marketplace. Then you can build a second project, consume those parts as a library, and then use them. Then what's great about that is if you make changes to your library and you publish updates, it'll actually update all of the apps that consume that library, which is, uh, which is a really neat feature. And then the last thing about that is, is if you publish as a library your parts to our marketplace, transparently under the hood, we're actually publishing your parts to NPM, which means that there is a secondary workflow um, where designers use Clutch to build parts, publish those to NPM, and then developers can install the parts that the designers built into um, their production code. Gotcha. Okay. So, so you know, we, we've talked a lot about what people can do with it. Um, when are you guys, I don't know if you guys are, you know, if you have a date in mind or like a general time period, but when are you thinking, or you may have no idea, but when are you thinking full-blown, like everyone, if you can come on the site, sign up and then use your tool? Do you have like a time frame in mind that you hope for at least or no? Just kind of taking it uh, day by day. Yeah, yeah. The short answer is when it's ready. I mean, we've already spent almost three and a half years, so we're not in a big rush. But um, I would say probably it's going to be a few more months, if I was to guess. We're getting some really great feedback from the initial people we brought in, and we're going to keep slowly trickling people in. Um, we'd love to give you a demo if, if you if you'd like one. Um, yes, please. <laughs> but we're yeah we're just we're just sort of taking it easy, trickling people in. Um, we'll get you set up. Then um, yeah, and then whenever we are our, our, our sort of north star metric, we've said is when we have a few people besides people inside of our company using it for real and building real products mm -hmm. and they're happy with it, then we will start opening up the floodgates. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. So um, in terms of the, uh, in terms of the demo, just real quick, <laughs> sorry, you, sorry, listeners. <laughs> um, I'll just send you an email and we can arrange that then. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. No, I, I, I love one of the coolest things about like having the podcast and stuff is like talking to founders like you that haven't released anything yet and tools that like normal consumers don't have access to, whether that be enterprise or whatever. Like you, you get to see kind of like the future of no code as well, just because uh, a lot of people don't know what's coming, just like Clutch, you know, like they know they know of your brand. They know, you know, kind of what you do, but they don't really know, you know. So, mm -hmm. but so, are you guys focused on just consumers or like small enterprise or like what? What is? What are you really going for? Like, what is your your persona that you're really attacking? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So right off the bat, I, I think that we're probably going to be the most complex of the low code or no code solutions out there. Uh, the people kind of kind of half twirling around. So we. You know, this would probably be something that you would do after you've used a bubble or a web flow and you're happy with it, you learn those concepts, but you feel yourself being limited. Um, another way that I've described it is in the video editing um, space. You've got things like iMovie and Windows Movie Maker at the very bottom end. They're easy. You pick a movie template, you load your movies into it, it just works. You don't think too much about it. And then you go, I want to I wanna have more creative freedom over this. So generally, you'll, you'll sort of graduate up into something like a Final Cut which is Apple's like more prosumer level video editing software. And you can get a long ways with Final Cut, but there are obviously tools above that. That's when you start getting into things like Adobe Premiere Pro and Avid and these really high end Hollywood, you know, style movie editing tools. Um, and that's probably where we're going to exist. So, um, yeah, so I, I think that as you asked the question of where we targeted, if you're just building your very first thing ever, we're probably not the best place to start. Mm -hmm. I would say once once you start hitting walls, you're probably a year or two in and you're starting to hit walls with Bubble and Webflow and some of the other players, that would be where you'd go, okay, I'm willing to um, accept having a higher learning curve to 
not have any limits anymore, zero limits. And so our whole motto for the company has been within reach, but without 